Hi, my name is Mr. Chun. I will give you a very warm welcome to my study room. If today is your first time, then I want to strongly encourage you to subscribe to this channel for more videos. Our study for today is on the area of a triangle, but we are still on coordinate geometry. So we are going to use vertices of the triangle to calculate the area and not the length of size as we know. Let's go into details of the lesson. But before we even take what exactly we'll be doing today, I just want to give a very quick recap of what we might have known about triangles already or the area of a triangle already. For example, if the base and the perpendicular height of a triangle are given, then the area is calculated by area being equal to one half times base times height. That is, if we know the base and the perpendicular height of the triangle, but then that is not the only way to calculate the area of a triangle. Also, if all three sides of the triangle are given without the perpendicular height given, then we can use the formula area equals the square root of S times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c where where s equals a plus b plus c all over 2 and a b and c are the length of the three sides of the triangle so that is how to calculate the area of a triangle if the length of the three sides are known but no perpendicular height but then that is not all there can be a test scenario where we are giving only two sides of the triangle and then an included angle so this is what i'm trying to say if you are given a triangle for instance a triangle like this and let's go here side a let's go here side b and let's go here side c assuming we have been given the side a and b the length of size a and b and then an included angle meaning there is an angle theta between a and b then the area of this triangle is going to be one half times a times b times sine theta and from this one alone we can form three formulas depending on the angle that is given for example, we use this because the angle is between A and B. Assuming the angle is between the side A and C, and the side A and C have been given, then it's going to be one half A times C, then sine theta. And if it is between B and C, it's going to be one half A times C sine theta. So let's note that this is used when two sides of the triangle are given and an included angle mean that the angle is between the two sides given. So this is what we are supposed to have known already from geometry that when the size of a triangle are given, we can use any of these three formulas depending on the case that is at hand to get the area. But like I said earlier, today's lesson is not really about this. This is some. This is what is the common one we should have known already. 
but today's lesson is a continuation of the coordinate geometry we did in the previous video and i encourage those who have not yet watched that video to go and watch to learn more all right so coming back to today's lesson i'm going to use two formulas to calculate the area of a triangle when the coordinates of the vertices have been given so let's take the method one immediately method one has two cases and case one is a situation where the coordinates of one of the vertices are zero zero or one of the vertices are the origin of the cartesian plane let me just write that and then explain further case one Calculating the area of a triangle with vertices 0, 0, x1, y1, and x2, y2. In a situation like this, we will use the formula A equals 1 half times the absolute value of x1, y2 minus x2, y1. All right. So we will just fix in the formula. We we'll just fix in the coordinates that will be in place of the x1, y1, x2, y2 without any stress. In case you are struggling to understand how you got the formula, you just this way you write your x1, x2 then y1 y2 then this one match here then you match here with broken line so this product on the board line comes first and then minus the product on the broken line so let's take an example quickly to solve this We are to find the area of a triangle whose vertices are 0, 0, 5, 2, and 3, 4. And just like in the previous video, I will always advise that you label it. So this will be x1, y1, x2, y2, just to avoid any confusion. So we are going to quote the formula quickly. A equals 1 half absolute value of x1 y2 minus x2 y1 then we just substitute the values one half absolute value of our x1 is 5 then our y2 is 4 minus our x2 is 3 and our y1 is 2 when we work it further we are going to have one half absolute value of 5 times 4 is 20 minus 3 times 2 is 6 then that is going to give us one half of 14 and this will also give us seven square units remember area is always calculated in square units and that becomes our answer this is case one let's quickly take case two Case 2 is how we calculate the area of a triangle when none of the vertices is 0, 0. We have some two steps we have to take. Let me write it quickly before I explain. So the case 2, once again, the case 2 is a situation where none of the vertices is 0, 0, 
then that one we need to follow these two steps and the steps are one select one of the vertices and move it to the point zero zero nice to the origin by translation and then step two is apply same translation to the two other vertices to obtain x1 y1 and x2 y2 in this case then it now looks like case one because now you move one of the point to zero zero and then you have two other points then we can go back and use the same formula we use in step one so let's take one example to see how it will go so here is it you have to find the area of a triangle whose vertices are two three negative one five and negative two negative six so let's go through the steps now we select one of the points and here i would like to select the second point you can select the first one you can select the third one it doesn't matter any of the vertices i would like to select the second one oh you let me just select the first one so the first point is two three to translate this to zero we mean that we are looking for two coordinates that when we add them to this we are going to get zero and that is going to be negative two and negative three so two plus negative two is zero three plus negative three is zero so this becomes our translation vector we are going to use it to translate this one and this one so the second point negative one five plus negative two negative three is going to give us negative three two then the third one negative two negative six plus our translation vector negative two negative three is going to give us negative four negative nine let me just rewrite them as points so our new set of points our vertices are going to be zero zero negative three two and negative 4 negative 9 like i always advise you label it so that you don't make mistake x1 y1 x2 y2 then let's just remind ourselves of the formula area equals one half time absolute value of x1 y2 minus x2 y1 let's substitute our coordinates into it quickly this is going to give us one half our x1 is negative 3 times y2 negative 9 minus x2 is negative 4 times y1 is 2 this gives us one half absolute value of 27 minus negative 8 so 27 plus 8 this gives us one half times 35 and that will give us 17.5 square units and that is our answer let's take another example for this one so that we don't waste much time we'll not write a full question we are taking the same preamble we are finding the area of a triangle with vertices 0 5 negative 4 negative 1 and negative 6 3 this time i will not 
I like to take the first point again just to bring variety. So I'll take negative four, negative one. I'm translating this to zero. So I must have four, one. So the negative four plus four is zero. Negative one plus one is zero. Then we take the first point on zero, five. Plus our translation vector four, one. Is going to give us four six. Now, our third point negative six three. Our translation vector is four one, and this is going to give us negative two four. All right, don't forget that for those who don't know what we are doing, when you are translating by a vector, you add the vector to the point to get its image. So our new set of point becomes zero, zero, four, six, and negative two four so this becomes as usual we should label so that we don't make mistake x2 y2 so we fix into the formula area equals one and a half times absolute value of x1 y2 minus x2 y1 Let's substitute into the formula quickly, and then that is going to give us one half x one is four, y two is four, minus x two is negative two, y one is six, and that is going to give us one half. 16 plus 12 which will give us one half times 28 and that will give us 14 square units as our area so this is what we do when we are given all the vertices of a triangle and we have to calculate for the area and we don't want to use the distance method to calculate for the line before fixing them into any of the earlier distance this is what we do then let's go on quickly to the method two Yeah, so method two, we are still going to use it to solve a question in the form of the case two. Find the area of a triangle with vertices A, X1, Y1, B, X2, Y2, and C, X3, Y3. In this case, this is best for those who cannot translate or those who don't want to translate any of the points. Then this method will be the best for you because you are not going to do any translation. You are going to fix all of them into the formula. And this formula is, I'm going to give you two formulas that can be formed into three. But then the very first one, let me write one. The very first formula is we are going to fix this into area equals one half absolute value of x1 times y2 minus y3 plus x2 times y3 minus y1 plus x3 
times y1 minus y2 absolute value of this so that one when you fix all of this into this it is going to give you the area straightforward then another me method or another formula which is just similar to this is to area equals one half times the absolute value of x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y1 the whole of this minus x2 y1 plus x3 y2 plus x1 y3 and this one in case and this same formula can be written this way one half x one y two minus x two y one all of this plus x two y three minus x three y two all of this plus x three y one minus x one y three absolute value of this all right this one looks a bit clumsy but in case you are wondering how i got it it's just a matter of writing your x one x two x three and then you repeat your x one they have y1, y2, y3. You repeat your y1. Then you match it this way. Match this one this way. And then match this one this way. Then let me mark this one with broken lines to show the differences. This one to match this one. This one to match this one so when you observe you see that the sum of the products in the board line the sum of the products in the board line minus the sum of the products in the broken lines are going to give you that so this is how we got this formula let us just take example and i will not take the example from any far place i will just use the two examples we solved with method one for us to see that any of them will give us the same result so it doesn't matter which one we use so let me just rewrite the question one quickly so like i said we are just repeating example one for the case two where we are finding the area of a triangle with vertices 2, 3, negative 1, 5, and negative 2, negative 6. Let's go. So it is very important for us to label so that we don't make mistakes. So x1, y1, x2, y2, and then x3, y3. Then I will use this first formula for it then I use the second one for the example 2 so just not to spend so much time the formula is here already let me substitute into it so our area is going to be one half times the absolute value of x1 is 2 then y2 is 5 minus y3 is negative 6 
then this one plus x2 is negative 1 times y3 negative 6 minus y1 which is 3 then plus x3 is negative 2 then our y1 is 3 minus y2 5 remember we are using the absolute value so solving for that is going to give us one half absolute value of 2 times this 5 minus negative 6 5 plus 6 gives us 11 plus negative 6 minus 3 negative 9 times negative 1 positive 9 then 3 minus 5 is negative 2 times negative 2 positive 4 you saw further to have to have one half this is 22 plus 13 and that will give us 35 so one half times 35 will give us 17.5 square units and you can see that is the first is the same thing we got here no not there is the same thing that we got here 17.5 square units when we solve this first example one using the case two using the case two so it shows that any of the two formulas will give us the same thing so we are going to use the second one to solve the example 2 to see if we get 14 square units so let's move on again to that so there you have it you are calculating the area of a triangle with vertices 0 5 negative 4 negative 1 and negative 6 3 since i've i've scrolled down it's very important for us to rewrite our formula so that we don't forget remember as i'm using the second one so that's going to be one half absolute value of x1 y2 plus x2 y3 plus x3 y1 all of this minus x two y one plus x three y two plus x one y three all right let's substitute our values quickly that's going to give us one half absolute value of very necessary for us to label so that we don't make mistake in substituting x one y one x2 y2 x3 y3 so this is going to be x1 is 0 x1 is 0 and y2 is this is y2 
y2 is negative 1 then plus s2 is negative 4 y3 is 3 plus x3 is negative 6 y1 is 5 then all of this minus x2 is negative 4 y1 is 5 plus s3 is negative 6 y2 is negative 1 plus x1 is 0 y3 is 3 let's simplify further to have one half then this will give us 0 minus 12 minus 30 all of this minus negative 4 times 5 negative 20 plus 6 plus 0 we saw further to get one half absolute value of this is negative negative 42 minus negative 14 which will give us plus 14 this will give us one half times 28 and don't forget that we are writing absolute value the answer is supposed to be negative 28 but because you are writing absolute value which means we ignore the negative sign that's why we have 28 and this will give us 14 square units which is the same as the answer we got here when we use the other method to solve case 2 so this shows that the two methods can work for any of them so it's now up to you the one working to take your time to decide on which of the methods to use each of them has its own advantage and then you see what to do but the biggest challenge here is to how is how to substitute the coordinates into the formula if you make mistake with one of them you see that your whole answer will be wrong so instead of us going to find use the distance formula to calculate the length of the triangle before using any of the other formulas i wrote at the beginning we can just substitute the coordinate of the vertices of the triangle to get what we want so i'm going to share with you a few questions and i want you to pause the video and work them out i will encourage you to use all the formulas and the scenarios to work it out so that you master it Feel free to share your answers with me in the comment box. Here we have our question. Let me increase the size a little so that we are. So here you have it. Find the area of the following triangles whose vertices are. And we have question one to four. Like I said, pause the video, take your time, and work each of them one by one. And feel free to share your answer with me in the comment box
all right so this is where we bring today's lesson to an end remember we started the lesson by recalling the formulas we know for calculating the area of a triangle when we know the length of the size we, we spoke about the one that the base and the perpendicular heights are given then we are going to use the formula half times base times the perpendicular height to find the area and then we also said when all three sides are given without the height or any angle then we are going to use the formula square root of x times x minus a times x minus b times s minus c where s is a plus b plus c divided by 2 and a b and c are the size the length of the size of the triangle and we also said there can also be an instance where we are giving only two sides and an included angle meaning that the angles between the two sides given then we are going to use one half times the product of the two sides times the sign of the angle between them and it can be the angle can be in any of the three sides and then we went ahead to come to the main lesson for today which is finding the area of a triangle when the length of size are not given but only the coordinate of the vertices and that one too we, we we took two scenarios or we used two formulas first and the first formula has two scenarios where one of the vertices is already zero zero which is the same as the origin of the cartesian plane then what we should do and then the second one gave us the instance where all three vertices are non-zero or none of the three vertices is the origin what we should do the second formula brought us to the situation where we don't want to translate any of the points to the origin but rather we want to work with them and i want to use the formulas to solve so you can go over many times and like i said when you solve the questions on the screen right now it's going to deepen your understanding of it and this is where we bring today's study to an end i hope it's been of help to you if yes why not consider subscribing to this channel for more videos like this one and then share with your friends to also enjoy from this lesson as well as like and comment for me to know that you are following Thank you for making time with me and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.